All right. So with this lesson for today, guys, all right. Um, does anybody remember uh, what kind of the definition of absolute value is? What was it? That one is the like negative six and the six. Yeah, that is correct. But but there is kind of like a definition for it. Yeah, it's the distance from zero. All right. So let me emphasize this. If I were to say the distance from school to your house is negative five miles, would that make any sense? No. Negative, listen to me, guys. This will help you with your science. Negative is a direction. What, what, Oliver? You can't interrupt. I'm doing something. I'm starting out very, I don't care. I'm watching you. You're right in front of me. All right. I'm about ready to send you out. Messing up my lesson. The first thing. Here. Mm -hmm. I put them right here. You know what? I want to call, got a whole bunch more for you. Now, back to the lesson. Absolute value. All right. Absolute value is a distance. So we don't say it's negative five miles. If I said draw something that's negative three inches, you wouldn't be able to draw something that's negative three inches. So negative is a direction. It's not a distance. Distance cannot be negative. All right. So that is what we're referring to when we say absolute value. It's how far away are you from the origin? Now, in this particular spot, what I want to draw is not really important, all right? But I'm gonna draw this and I'm gonna say, here is zero. What two points are six units away from zero? That would be? That is exactly correct. There are two points, all right? There are two points that are six units away from zero, all right? And they would be, negative six. So in this case, we would say X equals negative six or X could equal what? Six. All right. Now that's just the basics. All right. As you go down the page, you will see, wow, it gets a little bit more difficult. All right. Yes. Are you supposed to do like a plus minus sign? Yeah, we're getting there. All right. We're getting there. Yeah. So in this case, uh, he's one step ahead of me. All right, we have a negative six and positive six. So if you want, mathematicians are as brief as possible. So they created this symbol right here, plus or minus six, all right? So whenever you have the same number, one positive, one negative, you can just write plus or minus, and then you'll save yourself some time, all right? Now, again, very simple process, very simple process. Now, everybody look at number three, we're going down the page. If I look at number three and say the absolute value of X equals negative two, of course, everyone's gonna tell me the answer is? No solution. No solution, thank you, Oliver. The reason why it's no solution is because they're saying, what distance is negative two units from zero? Is there a solution to that? No, so we say no solution. That's what we're doing, all right? Anybody have any questions with that? All right, so the absolute value cannot equal a negative. Absolute value cannot equal a negative. All right, next, number five. Solution. What? Solution. Now, here's where people are trying to oversimplify it. All right, now here's what I want everyone to tell me. All right, let's just say, for example, this was not, uh oh, let's say, for example, this was not here, all right? And I asked you, the absolute value of what is seven? What is the absolute value of what is seven? Seven or negative seven, all right? So listen to what I'm saying. What can go inside the absolute value is either negative seven or seven. So to solve an absolute value, it's, please listen to me, it's really this simple. To solve an absolute value, you set what's inside the absolute value bars. So that would be X minus four. You set X minus four equal to seven. And then you set X minus four equal to what? 
negative seven. All right. X minus four equals seven. Then you write X minus four equals negative seven. That's provided the absolute value is isolated. And I'll show you what that means here in a minute. All right. Now from there, guys, listen up. We just solve it just like normal. We add four to both sides. So X could equal what? 11 or negative. x could equal what negative. negative three so those are your two solutions all right those are your two solutions so again remember anytime you solve an absolute value you write it twice you have to write two equations that's why kids get annoyed because instead of one equation there's always what there's always two unless it's no solution all right so that's all you're doing to solve an absolute value. All right, so let's go down and check out number seven. Okay, so now for question number seven. All right, as we're doing number seven, write both equations down first. <laughs> write both equations down. And Nora, what two equations am I writing? I don't want the answer. I want the equations. I didn't I didn't say I wanted I didn't want Well, how do you know the answer without knowing what the equation is? Tell her, Mikey. 3x minus 9 equals 27. 3x minus 9 equals 27. That's all there is to it. That's it. You just write 3x minus 9 equals 27. 3x minus 9 equals negative 27. And then you solve it out. All right. When I solve it out, I add 9. So I end up with 3x is equal to 36. And divide by 3, x equals 12. Adding nine, 3x equals negative 18. And so finally, x equals negative six. That's all there is to it. Solving absolute value equations. Hmm. Nothing to it. All right. Any questions with that? All right, let's go down the page. Number nine. Tell me how to set the equations up, please. Seven minus D equals one. Is it? Seven minus D equals one. And it's um and it's negative transpart. Seven, seven minus D equals negative one. Seven minus D equals negative one. Yeah. Now here's where I'm trying to help everybody get better. This negative D would look better if it was where? Yeah, yeah. On the other side. Right, is everybody with me on that? Same thing with this negative D. I am going to move the negative D over here. When I move it over there, it becomes what? Positive D. Then I move the one over. When I move the one over, I have to do what? Subtract it. So seven minus one. Six. Six. All right, so I have D equals six. Same principle over here. Adding, so I end up with D on the right side, and then I add one, and that becomes what? Eight. So D equals six, or D equals eight. Yes, sir. I the other way, but it still works. I don't know what you mean. Like, I got negative D equals eight. Yeah, of course. It's, it's, it's just you did an extra step, that's all. Yep. It's the same. You're exactly right. As long as you solve the equation correct, you're good. I know you do. I, that's what I'm saying. I know you do. You with me? All right, here we go. Let's look at 11. Nope, Oliver. Nope, it's okay. We're on number 11. All right, everybody's on number 11. Now, what's the difference? All right, what's the difference between this problem and the previous problem? Jake? Um, this one, uh, I'll ask that question number nine. But, um, what? My question on number nine was, 
Why would it be negative to negative eight? I, I don't understand what your question is. Um, never mind. I've no, no. Look up on the board. You're. We've been doing this for uh, almost a full year now. Oh yeah. Never mind. Never right. Mind. You're moving the D to the right and moving the one to the left. That way, the D can be positive. Never mind. That's All right. Well. I'm expecting you to do that. All right. Now on number eleven, who can tell me the difference between eleven and the previous problems? Tell me. Um, for the previous problem, the seven and the G were in uh, absolute value bars, and for this one, only the only the right uh, variable. So here we say the absolute value symbol is not isolated. In order to solve an absolute value problem, the absolute value must be isolated. What does that mean? That means that this absolute value of X has to be by itself. And is it by itself? Yeah. No, it's not. There's a minus four next to it. That's what meant by isolated. Nothing can be around it. Something can be inside of it, but nothing can be around it. So I need to get rid of the what, Mr. Cappy? Right. So all I'm doing is adding four. That's it. Right. So now I want you everybody to write down the absolute value of X. The absolute value of X is equal to five. And then once you write the absolute value, from here, you can solve it by saying X is equal to what, Mr. Cappy? Plus or minus what? That's the answer. Plus or minus five. All right, here we go. 13. Concentrate on 13. What do I have to do first here? Add nine. Add nine. So I need everybody to write down three absolute value equals one. then what? Divide by three. Divide by three. <clears throat> absolute value of X is equal to seven. Therefore, plus or minus seven. That's all there is to it. So I, my, uh, my personal method, uh, very, um, uh, very, very uh, subtly, though, I still can't the right answer. Will this um, apply to other, um, other ones I got? Uh, I compare, I compare, I uh, eliminated the three by uh, by uh, turning the x into a, into three x as opposed to. Uh, you really can't, and I'll tell you why. Because you can't distribute through an absolute value. You cannot distribute through an absolute value. Right. Okay. I'm glad, I'm glad I asked. Yes. Tell me. Uh, we get plus or minus seven. Well, there's always two solutions. The absolute value of what two numbers is seven. The absolute value of seven is seven, and the absolute value of negative seven is seven. Right? All right. So here we go. 15. <laughs> All right. So for 15, I have to do what first? Thank you, Mackenzie. Add the one. Add the one. And what does that become? Um, four absolute value x minus three equals 15. And then what do you do next? Divide by four. You would divide by four. So listen, I'm because we're getting so good at it, there's no reason to put plus one, plus one. Divide four, divide by four. I want everyone to look at that and say, obviously, the absolute value of x minus three is equal to four. Is that a problem? <laughs> right? So bear with me on that. Add one, divide by four. Now the absolute value is isolated. Now you have to write both equations. So what are the two equations? Go. Um, X minus three equals four and X minus three equals negative four. Beautiful. So my final answer is either. Um, X equals seven or or x equals yep. one. Yep, exactly, exactly correct. Nothing to it, all right? Isolate the absolute value, all right? Isolate the absolute value, then write two equations. That's all there is to it.
All right, Miss Elliot, you tell me with this one. What do I do first? What do I do? Subtract the one. And what does that become? And then what do I do? Or we can say, I'm so smart. I already know that negative 20 minus one is what? Yes. All right. So absolute value. Nine minus four X equals negative three. All right. So explain one more time. What did I do? First, I did what? You isolated the absolute value by doing what? And then exactly. So now obviously just look at that and tell me the answer. Shh. What's the answer? No work. You just look at it and know. No solution. It's no solution. Can the absolute value be equal to a negative? The absolute value cannot equal a negative. All right. So I like these problems because if you're aware, all right, and you're careful, you'll have no solution. All right, simple as that. All right, Lila, you help me out now. What do I do first with 19? Yes, you would, very good. Now write the two equations. Mm -hmm. 2x minus 9 equals negative 21 and 2x minus 9 equals negative 21. Beautiful. So now what? Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. 2x equals I don't want y'all to be nervous. I don't care if you use your calculator. 2x equals what? Well, okay, okay. Negative 12. So x equals, yes, you're good. You're adding nine to both sides, guys. Yeah. Yeah, what, Oliver? So what's negative 21 plus nine? What is it? Negative 12. Well, where did you get negative six? Yeah. Wait, what? Nothing. Stop. Five. Just stop talking. I'm not even talking to you this time. All right. Now, again, though, I'm a little puzzled by the fact that you don't know negative 21 plus nine is negative 12. I am a little puzzled about that. Just like I'm a little puzzled that if I have 2x equals negative 12, you don't know that x equals negative 6. I'm having a little trouble understanding that. Forgive me. Now, on the next one, what do I need to do? Yes. Add 9. So that becomes... And then x equals 15. Those are our solutions. That's it. Those are our answers. Nothing to it at all. All right, write two equations and solve. Austin, what? Yeah, yeah that's what I, I just didn't get. I mean, that negative 12 and x equals negative 6 and the left side. Right on the right side there. Well, negative 21 plus 9 is negative 12, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You see what I'm saying, right? And I want you guys to use your calculators. All right. Shouldn't be necessary, okay. but all right, here we go. All right, 21 is nice. What do I do first? Aiden. You're gonna subtract the three. You're gonna subtract the three. All right. Negative 43. Which would be negative 43. Then what? And then you divide by negative one. That's correct. Divide by negative one. Which means just 43. Yep. 
Now write the equations. It would be 6x plus 7 equals 43, and then 6x plus 7 equals negative 43. And then continue, please. Then for the first one, you would subtract 7, and it would be 36. And then? And then you divide by 6, and it's just 6. Perfect. Next. You would subtract by 7, and it would equal negative 50. And then you divide, and you'll get negative 20. And then right there. Yes. Right. Now, of course, that's negative 50 over 6, but I'm hoping at some point you can think about that and not have to write negative 50 divided by 6. Okay. Yes. Awesome. I thought it'd be no solution. I thought it can't be negative. No. It, it's, it's no solution when the absolute value is equal to a negative. It's not equal to a negative. You with me now, right? And the reason people make the mistake is because of this right here. All right. You have to get rid of the negative. All right. You have to get rid of the negative. Okay. So this one's kind of annoying. All right. Charlotte, good. What am I doing? Um. Subtracting what? Why subtracting 13? No, it, I want you to think of it like this. If I said 5 plus 8x equals 101, what do I do first? You see what I'm saying? You can't add with a multiplication. You with me? That's a good mistake, though. All right. So I have to do what first? Subtract 5. And when I do that, I get... That's what I'm asking. Yeah, good. Then what? Yes, ma'am. And what is that? What? 96 divided by 8, I think, is 12, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And now write both equations, please. What would it be? Thank you very much. Yep. Well, what do you want it to be? Well, you divide both sides by 10. 14 over 10. Am I right? And then we reduce it, though. What does it reduce to? Yes. Okay, now on the other side, I'm going to do what? And that becomes? And so X equals? You're awesome. That's it. All right, Max, let's see if you've been paying attention. I know. Is the absolute value isolated? Um, yeah. Yes, it is. Okay. So, so now what? Um, so 2 over 3x minus 5 equals 7, and then 2 over 3x minus 5 equals negative 7. Exactly. On the first one, you would add 5, that's 12. Right. Two over three x, and now, you would multiply by the reciprocal, which is what? Uh, multiply twelve by three over two. And tell me and, what that is. And, divide first. Divide. Twelve by two. Twelve by two. That's six. And then one. So it'd be eighteen over one. Or eighteen. Eighteen. X equals 18. And then on the other one? Or the second one, you would add 5 
that is negative two equals two over three multiplied by yeah, three over two, which is negative two to the one, two to the one, and I am negative three. Yes, how about that? 18, comma, negative three. Anybody? All right. I feel like this isn't too bad. All right, what do I have to do first? All right, um, first. Divide by eight. First divide by eight. And what do I get? Um two x minus five. Um equals which reduces to what? Uh negative one over four. Right. Okay. So now what? Um Uh, no solution. Why? Right. It has nothing to do with it's a fraction. It has everything to do with that it's equal to a what? Negative. Yeah. A absolute value cannot equal a negative. The absolute value cannot equal a negative. So that's a nice one. No solution. What's the matter? Because eight, this means eight times, times right. Does that make sense now? Yeah. But uh, also, know, yeah, how you know like the absolute value can't end up being negative? Well, because when I divide by eight here, I now have it isolated. So this now is two absolute. 2x minus 5, absolute value, equals negative 1 fourth. Think about it this way. If I take the absolute value of a number, can it be negative? Yeah. The absolute value of what number is negative? It can't, right? So when I say this, if I say what's the absolute value of negative 3, what's that answer? What's the absolute value of 7? So the absolute value of what is negative 10? What? Yeah. There isn't a solution. So when your absolute value is equal to a negative, it's automatically no solution. People miss that up on the test all the time. What? So would that be the same if it was like negative 8 equals 2? Would that also be no solution? I don't know what you mean. So negative eight, um, and then two x minus five equals two. Would that still be negative solution? Yeah, because the negative is on the out. I mean, you have to isolate. Yeah. That's that's why you isolate first. When you isolate first, you can tell if it's no solution or not. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's check out twenty nine. Sophia's helping me. Go. Well, what do I have to do first? You subtract five. That's perfect. And when I subtract five, I get what? All right. Now, because it's positive, it has two solutions. So what two equations are we going to write? And then? Look how easy that is. That's it. Now, for me personally, I would move the what? You with me? Because I want to keep it positive, right? So if I move the X, and then I'd have to move the 7. So what does X equal? Can you see? Can you see that? Tell me what. Tell me what you're gonna do next. Uh oh, hold on one second. Go ahead. Good. So we subtract three. Positive four, right? So x equals. Now, did you understand what I was trying to tell you a minute ago? Now, 
right? I was just trying to switch the uh, switch the variables because I want the variable to be positive. All right, so if I do it to the other side now, when I move this and I move this, tell me. Yes, it would be. Those are your options, negative four or 10. All right, let's take a look at 31. <coughs> is it already isolated? Yeah. Yeah. So all we have to do is rewrite it twice. All right, so Mr. Cappy, what do I do on this? Uh, okay, so you would do x plus 4 equals 14. Yes, you would. And then x plus 4 equals negative 14. And then the answers are x equals 10 and x equals negative 8. That was really good. Easy as that. Yes, sir. Three, yeah. What do I have to do first? Uh, first yes. Subtract eight. Subtract eight. eight. And then we were able to make a bowl of divide or maybe we to that with the twice. So four x plus one is twenty. And plus six point and then what we do is you would subtract, subtract one. Subtract one, we get 19 divided by four, and then we'll go like that for now. I want to rewrite this as much more. Mm -hmm. Four x plus one equals another point. Subtracting one more, we get another point of one. Divide that one four. Yeah, you would be with the fraction. That's it, man. That's how easy. All right, let me look at something. Mm. Wow, this could have been a one day event. You guys did really good. Might make it a one day event. All right, let's look at 35. 35 is annoying just because we have fractions. So here we go. Set it up for me, Mikey. Just again. Yes. And then? Yes. Yeah. Now here's where I want you to be good at the fraction. So try not to use a calculator for now. All right. <laughs> try to work with me. So this is. Yes, definitely. So one half is you're adding three sixths, right? So that's two thirds X equals, which is reduces to. Yes. And so now two thirds X equals two thirds, right? So what does X have to be? Yeah, X equals one. Okay, let's look at 35. We're gonna add, what? So now we're gonna add one half, right? When we add one half, how many sixes is one half? Three. Yeah. 
So now we have two thirds X is equal to what? No. Wait a minute. I got two six, right? Wait, what? And two six reduces to one third, right? Then you multiply by the reciprocal. And the reciprocal is three over two. And then X is equal to. All right, so here, let's just do this, guys. Just a little bit of homework. Let's do uh, two through 12. Two through 12 is all you have to do. Two through 12. Then we'll do the SAT and ACTs tomorrow. Two through 12. Okay. Time to climb.